We continue with our coronavirus watch. Our 18 to 34-year-olds, also known as gener Generation Z, are next in line to be vaccinated against the coronavirus. They're scheduled to get their jabs from September. By that time, it would be almost seven months since those in Phase 1 received protection against the virus. In the United States, authorities are already considering a third booster jab, especially for those in vulnerable groups like the elderly and sick. So what are the chances that South African authorities would do the same. For more on this, we're joined by Professor Barry Shub. He's the Ministerial Advisory Committee's Chair on Vaccines. Professor Shub, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the chances of a booster, why is the U.S. already considering that? Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. I think they're considering that and uh, several other countries are also looking at it's individuals whose immune system uh, is not working adequately. They're what we call immunosuppressed. So this would be with under, uh, undercurrent illnesses or people on various treatments for cancer, for example, uh, illnesses such as HIV and so on, where the, they're not responding as well to the normal two doses of Pfizer, for example. So a booster dose is being considered to actually, again, stimulate the immune system to get immune response. So at the moment, it's really being looked at particularly with these immunosuppressed individuals. So, so it's being looked at now for those with vulnerable immune systems. Would it be looked at for, for lack of a better word, ordinary citizens who do not have com compromised immune systems, but further down the line might need a boost? Yeah, I think this is it. You know, unfortunately, you know, these are excellent vaccines. Let's make no mistake about it. They've radically reduced severe disease, which really is the main aim at this stage of vaccination. So they're very good vaccines. But on the other hand, they're not as good as, for example, measles vaccine is one example, or polio or any of those vaccines, which give very long lasting, sometimes even lifelong immunity. So it's not in that class, unfortunately. They're good. But we don't know at this stage how long, how durable the good immunity is going to last. Uh, at the moment, uh, there have been studies showing that there's good immunity lasting for upwards of even seven months, eight months down the line. But eventually we feel that that immunity is going to decay. It's going to uh, go down a bit. Now, at this stage, it's too early to know how frequently we're going to need boosters in healthy individuals. It may be annually. Uh, maybe every two years, every five years, we don't know at this stage. I think we can be pretty confident that we will need boosters uh, at a future time. Would these boosters in future, Professor Shub, uh, protect us from the different variants that are cropping up? Well, that's the other, that's the other unknown. Um, because these variants are really unpredictable variants. You know, at this stage, we can't predict when and where we're going to get these variants, and more importantly, how they're going to behave. We know that the one that we had before the Delta, the beta variant, uh, relatively escaped immune response from vaccines. So whether another similar variant will arise, that we don't know. So there are two things. One of them is that the, vaccine, the virus does change, and the other is that the immunity does decay. And for both those reasons, we probably will need boosters. Uh, Professor Shub, would the third booster be uh, the same? vaccine administered a third time, would it be a mix and match with different vaccines or would it be uh, the vaccine tweaked in some way if it does come to that? Yeah, it could be any of those. You know, there's a lot of research going on with what, what we call, there's a technical name, we call it heterologous boost, you know, where we mix the vaccines for the first and second or the second and third. Um, and there's shown to be some kind of advantage, in fact, even in mixing those. But uh, at this stage, we certainly don't advise people to do their own mixing. This has to be researched properly. But uh, there has been some evidence of some mixing of vaccines, which does have an advantage. Now, whether it's going to be that or whether the vaccines will need to be tweaked, I think they will need to be tweaked. Remember, we're only now in our first generation of vaccines. There will be improvements of vaccines as the science of vaccines develop. And they will, we will get improved vaccines which can deal with variants. One of the things is actually get a vaccine which is designed to, in fact, attack the virus and what we call the common, uh, common um, antigenic determinant. In other words, something which is common, which doesn't change. Uh, and if we can attack, we can identify which part of the virus doesn't change. 
we can actually design a, a vaccine like that, which will affect all the variants irrespective of the change. But that's still something in the future, something still to be researched. Uh, Professor, you're saying that the, uh, the immune response wanes over time. Does the body not have backup systems that it would use to remember the immune response yeah. it had to the vaccine or to the disease? Yeah, it's called the memory immune system. And there are, in fact, cells of the immune system which are called memory cells. And they ought to respond to uh, when, the, when the body is challenged with the same virus. That should, that, that should occur, and that does occur uh, in the very good vaccines like the, the measles and so on. Now, whether that's how good that memory response will be with COVID, we don't know. We do know that, for example, that uh, infections like influenza and so on, which are respiratory infections, upper respiratory infections, the immunity is not as durable as those viruses which cause infections of the whole body. Now, where coronavirus fits into that, we're still studying that. So, yeah, there is memory, but how efficient, how durable that memory is going to be when one does get infection later on, that we still have to determine. Uh, Professor Shub, final question for me. As the population of people who are vaccinated increases, will that decrease the different types of variants of the disease that crop up? Not necessarily. You know, these variants occur in individuals who, are, who's, who, who don't respond that well and where the virus continues to multiply. And as the virus multiplies, it's got more chance of being selected to escape the immunity. So it's not going to be that, you know, if, if the population's immune, that's really the way that we have to deal with the virus, to stop it multiplying in individuals and to get as many people immunized as quickly as possible. That's really the aim. Professor Shub, thank you so much for your time. We know you're a busy man, particularly at this time in the country. We appreciate it. He's the Ministerial Advisory Committee's Chair on Vaccines.